Now, I want to ask you to take a moment, step back into the way back machine with me. Let's go back to where all of this started. 30 years ago, our founder, Bill Warner, dared to imagine a different way to edit video. Avid created the nonlinear editing category, and it changed the industry forever. And it's still the gold standard today. The world's biggest media companies and the best and most celebrated media professionals have cut literally millions of projects on Media Composer. But it's a brave new world we live in, too. So I guess I shouldn't have been surprised when one of the very first things Jeff did when he became CEO was to come to me and the team, and he challenged us, really, our engineering product teams, to rethink this industry icon. Well, I have to say the team took up that challenge, and the result is a reimagining of the world's leading video editing solution. Ladies and gentlemen, meet the new media composer. For aspiring storytellers everywhere who want to be seen and heard. For creative teams producing their next binge-worthy series or summer blockbuster. And for large media organizations working collaboratively to entertain and inform on the world stage. This is for you. Meet the new Avid Media Composer. Completely reimagined for what you need today and tomorrow while maintaining everything you know and love about the Emmy, Oscar, and Eddie Award-winning tool that started it all. Edit at the speed of your imagination with new task-oriented workspaces, innovative bin mapping and navigation, and a new smart panel interface. Tackle the most demanding projects with ease with the next generation Avid Media Engine supporting native OP1A media, background rendering, and distributed processing over the network. Finish and deliver without ever leaving Media Composer. 4K, 8K, and even 16K resolution with a full 32-bit float color pipeline and HDR, a new ACES workflow, and industry standard IMF delivery. Media Composer's new customizable tool set is perfect for any editor, assistant, logger, or producer. Customize the interface for any role with unparalleled security and control. This is the new Media Composer. Completely reimagined for you, the modern media maker. It's faster, it's easier to manage all the footage in all the different ways. And I think in the end, it's more creative because it gives you that ability to go from what's in your mind to what you see on the screen. All right, how about that? All right, this is really exciting stuff and Bill, we hope we do you proud with Media Composer 2019 because it makes editing, finishing, and delivery more intuitive, more interactive, and more efficient. It maintains what you know and love about Media Composer, but it's reimagined for more of what you need today and what you may need tomorrow. It's evolutionary and revolutionary. Now, we spent the last few years meeting with uh, editors, freelancers, post houses, broadcasters, and universities to really make sure we got this thing right. They all weighed in, and your input and feedback was invaluable, hugely critical to us getting this right. And while I love talking about the new Media Composer family of products, you just got to see it to believe it. So what I want to do right now is bring Mr. Michael Krulik back out to the stage. Michael? All right. Michael. Give us the grand tour here. Maybe let's start out with uh, the new user experience. Absolutely. Well, take a look at this. This is amazing. Mm, look at this shiny. How about that? Yeah. Doesn't that look great? Nice. So now what we have basically is a, a brand new UI. Mm -hmm. We wanted to make something more modern. Yep. We wanted something that you know uh, changed and evolved a little bit. We wanted to keep the standards of current editors, yep. but also bring in the new talent, yep. which is very important. So. Uh, just going in and taking a look at how this works. Again, you have your bins, you have your source record, you have your timeline. But uh, look at this. We now have a customizable paneled 
UI. Ooh, look at that, that's nice so and slick. So if you go in and you're changing the size of your layouts, you can go in and you can add to this, totally customizable. Uh, you have your bin container here. The bin container actually is your, your project. We yep. can actually slide out to show our bins right here. Yep. If I open up, uh, let's open this bin right here, it actually comes up in a tab, so everything is tabbed in this area. Now, you might think, well, that, that seems pretty locked. What, what if you like to float bins? Yeah, like what if I like working that way? If you do like to have your bins floating, I can simply pull that out, and I can have floating bins as well. Wow, so it's really the best of both worlds. You work the way you want to work. Exactly. If you do want to float bins, you can. If you want to have them locked into the uh, paneled bin layout, you can do that. So a lot of great uh, customization. Now, imagine also if we go in and let's take uh, our bin right here. Yeah. If I take that and pull it down, you see the little green yeah, regions? Yeah. That looks, what, is, what does that do? That's actually giving you more control for your layout. Ooh, look at that. So I can take you know, multiple bins here mm -hmm. and actually stack them. Stack them in the bin container, so watch this. As I go in and move bins out of the way or something, it actually closes and collapses, again, giving you more yeah. control on how you're laying things That's out. That's fantastic. So imagine if you had two bins, or two monitors. Yeah. So if you had a bin monitor and your edit monitor. What you could do with that, just awesome. The whole left yeah. monitor could be just full of a nice paneled bin layout with your scripts, your bins, your Everything. different views. But even in the one monitor view, it's really nice and clean. Yeah. It is really yeah. clean and uncluttered. Yeah. You're also seeing we've put the script view, the uh, frame view and the uh, text view up on the top here. Yep. And another nice design point is as I close the bin, you see how the tools collapse into a little pull down ah. right here. Yep. So again, giving it a nice new refreshed look. Nice. Now, uh, do you like working in frame mode or? That's how I prefer to work, but one of the big challenges is there is that I got a lot of clips finding the clip that I'm looking for. You're trying to move around, you're trying yeah. to navigate that larger canvas of where your bin is. Yeah. What we've now included is the new bin map. Oh, look at this. So the bin map is a little area, it's just like a little landscape, like a video game. Look at that. Going through that's showing me the actual size of the bin. We can actually change that by just moving the little view here. And the white area is just showing me what I'm viewing. What are you viewing? That's fantastic. And again, you can turn that on or off if you would like it. So again, nice, beautiful view here. Yep. Now, uh, remember the smart tool? Yep. Well, if you look at the left-hand side of your timeline. Looks, looks much cleaner over there. What's, what's going on? We gave you real estate back. Ah. People said we want that real estate, and we've actually condensed the smart tools into buttons on your uh, upper the, uh, top of the timeline. Yep. And if you select it, you can turn them on and off. You can right click to choose what mode you'd like to be in. By the way, these are mappable, yep. so you can still map them to your keys and use them as you want. And by the way, the seasoned Media Composer editor should be very happy. I see somebody doing this. The weightlifter is back. back. Nice. <laughs> so the weightlifter to lift your clips, the scissors to cut and ripple, everything is right there. What's all the stuff over on the right side here? The right side, that is your, uh, your workspaces. Oh, okay. So rather than going to a pull-down menu to find your workspaces, I can go in and choose my workspaces right here. Again, a nice, clean look. I can even go in and say, let's just show the icon only. If I do make a modification to my layout, let's say I want to take my uh, new inspector tool, mm -hmm. and I can drag that, drop that into a certain area. I can even take other windows. Let's take the uh, maybe the audio tool, and I want to take that, and I want to tab it down here. So just by holding a modifier, I now have tabbed tools that I'm creating. That's fantastic. Now the nice thing about the inspector tool is it's contextual. As I go in and choose. Yeah, all that data's right there. All it's, that metadata. Yeah. So I don't have to have a bin with lots of columns. I can actually see all the information here. I can collapse that information and it also shows me information if I choose the source window or the record window. So all that information is available to me. So again, your workspaces. As I go in, if I decide I want that real estate back, I can close that and what you'll see is up in the upper right-hand corner, I have a little pull-down menu to ah, also choose my workspaces. That's awesome. So again, really clean. You're only seeing the tasks that you need when you need them. That's fantastic. So new user experience looks great. No clutter. You can find media faster. You have the new smart panels. It's just really, really awesome, Michael. Exactly. What do you think? Isn't that great? Pretty cool, huh?
So Michael, I also know we did a lot of work under the hood. So let's show everybody what we did with the new Avid Media Engine. Oh, absolutely. The new Avid Media Engine, well, basically starting with live timeline and mm -hmm. background rendering and transcoding. Yeah, you may not know it, but you've been using it for years. We kind of snuck it in last year. Yes. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> But now we've actually uh, made it a little stronger. We've yep. made it uh, come into the next generation with our new Media Composer Distributed Processing. Yep. So the nice thing about distributed processing is you can take computers that are sitting idle in your facility yep. and actually set them up as a, a render form and give you complete distributed processing functionality. Once you add them to your network, you simply go in and select from your render to go to distributed processing, and it farms out where it's needed, where you need to go, to go in and do the distributed processing for the render of your choice. That's fantastic. So to sum it up, you can farm processing out to the network, right? We can keep working with no disruption, and even leverage those old workstations that are just sitting around. That is fantastic. Exactly. All right. So let's take a look at how you can finish and deliver without ever leaving Media Composer. So one of the things, Michael, we've been doing, as you know, is working side by side with leading content providers, really to help standardize packaging, finishing, and delivery, really to benefit the entire community. And the new Media Composer really delivers, uh, I think, a, a, it packs a pretty big punch here too, right? So why don't we walk over through what we're doing here? You're exactly right. So that was very important with the process and with Media Composer 2019. Yeah. So we've been looking ahead for customer needs to work with high resolution media uh, and to be able to deliver new deliverables depending on what format they're working yep. in. So besides having you know 16K projects built into Media Composer. Wait, 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 wait. wait. I'm still on like 4K and 8K. I think a lot of people are, yeah. right? So you're saying we can go to 16K now. You actually can do projects up to 16K, but we've also built in 32-bit float, 32 float pipeline into the software. So 16K resolution with 32-bit float pipeline across the entire pipeline. Across the entire pipeline, so you can actually finish at higher quality and now higher that's, bit That's rate. pretty cool, huh? Come on, yeah. We've also built... We've also built in uh, ACES capable workflows. Yep. So we do have that with Media Composer 2019. Yep. And also support for OpenEXR decoding in the software. So if you want to also really, there you go. There you go. You got a woo. If you also want to work with really a highly, high quality uh, DNX version, we have DNX uncompressed, uncompressed. Yep. all the way up to 32 bit as well. So you can do all those higher deliverables uh, that are needed with Media Composer 2019. Okay, so how about when we're ready to kind of package and deliver this sucker? We'll package it yeah. up. We'll go ahead and take a look at the UI here. Yeah. Now, one thing I want to point out is for your quality, you'll see that we do have the full quality, quality float, float right mm -hmm. on the bottom here. But for those deliverables, depending on who you want to go to, if I go in and select export of the sequence, what you'll see is I now have built in IMF. Ah. So we can build in, there we go. Yeah, pretty cool. So now you can go in and build those uh, standard IMF SMPT packages to deliver wherever they need to go for your over over the top uh, deliverables. So all in can, one package. That's fantastic. So you can be confident that you won't lose any color data coming or going, right? And work with high res HDR formats from start to finish. Okay, so all from within Media Composer. Excellent. Now, for years, another challenge that our customers always talk to us about is. They have these big teams, these larger production teams, and they're asking, how can they simplify Media Composer and customize it for the different folks within the workflow? And we've done a lot here, too. So we have a completely customizable tool set here that I think, Michael, this is going to be, I think, just a, a, a killer feature for everybody. Show us how this works. Absolutely. Well, we basically know that one size doesn't fit all in the facility. You have your editors, you have assistants, you have loggers. Everybody has a specific task or role that they need to perform. Yep. So the nice thing about Media Composer 2019 is we put that control into your hands. So the editor may have a different view to go in and create certain formats. You want to limit that. The assistant, they want to go in and they have certain tasks or settings that they want to perform. The logger maybe is just coming in for a certain amount of time. You don't want to give them any sort of exporting capability. And the producer, basically, you don't want to give them anything, anything. at all. That's right. Except you want to let them be able to play back a sequence yeah, yeah. in Media Composer. They don't do anything, right. <laughs> exactly. So the right tool for the right roles. I get that. And this is exactly what they need. Now, what about security? I got to imagine with some of the features we've done here, we can help with security, too. Absolutely. This is the power of the Media Composer Enterprise uh, system here. So the idea is that you can go in and protect and secure your content that might be vulnerable to uh, any sort of malicious or unauthorized use. You don't want anybody leaving with that media. So what you're seeing here is the admin tool where, you know, it looks nice. You can go in to buy uh, groups. It's all LDAP groups or individual editors. And I can go in and turn on or off functionality 
by simply a checkbox. So for myself, maybe I want to go in and say, well, I'm not going to capture. I'm going to bring uh, files in by linking. Maybe I want to go in and limit the amount of bins that I'm using or anybody else. Uh, or even, you know, formats. I want to say, you know, I'm not doing stereoscopic. So I'm customizing for that person. That is fantastic. And this is huge because it makes it super easy to lock down that content and helps people keep from, uh, you know, helps facilities to keep from media being stolen or posted to social media because we know this is just a huge problem. So show us that. Absolutely. You literally turn that off, right? Literally turn off export to file and that option will not come up inside of Media Composer. That is fantastic. Okay. So I also have to imagine all of this sort of customization will help with training as well. Yeah, training is very important. Or also, you have new people coming into the facility. How many times have you gotten a different frame rate? Or somebody's like, I don't know what to pick. Yeah, I'll just choose thing. this one. Exactly. And I'll start working. Well, I can go into specific formats. Let's open up the Format tab. And you can see I can turn off any sort of project creation whatsoever. So that won't even come up. Or I could open up specific formats and choose the frame rate that would come up. And that's, again, going to show when they go to the project, crea uh, project creation what they can or cannot see. So all that's built that's in. Pretty cool. All right, so pretty, pretty cool stuff. Very cool. Thank you, Michael. So bring up that sexy interface one more time. All right. see How about that? Oh, <laughs> yeah, I like that. OK, so Media Composer 2019 can keep productions moving with a brand new user experience, uh, the next gen Avid Media Engine finishing right within the box, in a completely customizable tool set, as you just saw there. So very, very exciting stuff. So Michael, when is this going to be available? We anticipate delivery at the end of May. End of May? <laughs> the end of May. Yeah. Like, like, like yeah. next month? <laughs> like very soon. <laughs> oh, my, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty excited here, Michael. Are you excited about this? I'm excited. It's awesome. And, yeah, I'm thinking, I'm feeling kind of generous again. Are you feeling generous? What about that raise? Um, I'll, I'll, I'm thinking about that. <laughs> But I'm, I'm feeling so generous that I'm thinking I'm about to have my Oprah moment. Uh -oh. You guys ready for this? <laughs> Look out. All right, you ready? Here's what I want all of you in the audience to do right now. Reach under your seat, OK? There's something taped under there. Everybody, that's right. Everybody, reach under your seat. Grab that envelope. Somebody's going to win a free year of Media Composer. Somebody's going to do that. Let's see, open it up. Who's got the card inside? Who's got it? Keep doing it. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> you get a free year of Media Composer. Nice. You get a free year of Media Composer. You get a free year of Media Composer. You know what? Everybody in the room gets a free one-year subscription to Media Composer. <laughs> Woo! Now, how about that for an Oprah moment, huh? This is exciting stuff. Now, there is a catch. There is a catch. <laughs> You do have to do a little bit of work. So the one thing you need to do is take that card. So everybody's got one. Take that card. Take it up to the uh, partner pavilion upstairs. Go see the AVID kiosk, and we'll give you your activation code. But everybody gets one. And you know what? We really recommend use this for yourself. This is for your, your copy of Media Composer to play with. And while you're there, you can actually also join the beta program if you're interested. Uh, so you could literally get on this thing next week if you wanted to start playing with some of the features that Michael just showed there. And this afternoon, don't miss out on the hands-on training that's also going on. So really, really a lot of exciting stuff happening here with Media Composer. So thank you, Michael. Mr. Michael Krulik, everybody. Thank you. I have to tell you, we have certainly covered a lot here today. You've seen how Avid expands your creative possibilities, propels team collaboration, and supercharges the enterprise. And what I want to do is just take a quick moment and, uh, on a personal level. I just hit my 25-year anniversary with Avid back in January. So it's 25 years. Thank you. So I spent my whole career here, and I have to say, the reason why I'm sharing with you is 25 years into this journey, I have never been more excited to be a part of AVID and a part of this community. It's truly humbling to serve all of you, and it's truly inspiring to see where we're all taking this. So that's all the time I have right now. I'm going to hand it back over to Jeff to close things out. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dan. Nice job.